but Brett Eggerman. First action as a BYU quarterback since 2000. We're flashing back September 30, 2000 to be exact. As of in the Carrier Dome, and, well, he done got bent up pretty good by the Orange defense, separates the shoulder, and would not play again. First BYU drive, we're back to third. They got a little diamond vision going there. They got four guys, which means they're singled on the other side. Oh, they were just duping them. Andrew Ord with the single coverage touchdown. Seven on the BYU. Eggman, he's happy. Glad to be back playing. Syracuse possession now. Jamel Riddle, a little reverse. And well, he's not going to need to watch that uniform because nobody touched him. Look at that. Talk about your escort service. Game's tied <laughs> at seven. Second quarter, 14-7 BYU. Third and goal, R.J. Anderson. Stop. This game's in Pro Bowl, man. Yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. Well, we're going to go for it. Gary Crowd and his team's on a mission. Fourth and goal, Anderson rolling right. Now look at Lenny Cusimano, the fullback. He's over there, and he is so open. Lenny, Lenny, Would Lenny. Would come back to haunt them? Mm, it might. Croton, happy with his defense because he won't have to shoot him. BYU drives still in the second quarter. Marcus Whalen rolling. He's going to cover 58 yards in this one. Drag down at the one. BYU would score to make it 21-7 and cap a 99-yard drive. Let's jump to the third. 21-14. Damian Rhodes. It's like the OSC sweep. He's in. Second TD of the game. We're tied at 21. Next BYU drive. Very interesting. Eggman under pressure. Going to get wrapped up and manages to get the pass off. Falling down. Catch that one complete to Toby Christensen. Eggman, though, he's going to hurt his hands. So he's going to temporarily leave the game. Enter Lance Pendleton. This is BYU. They don't just hand it off when they got the sub in there. They'll throw it. Ten-yard gain. Pendleton, now go back. Eggman's ready to come back in. A couple of plays later, Whalen. Little handoff. Three-yard run, and then he gets more. And then he gets more. 234 yards rushing by BYU. Next play, Eggman taking it in himself. Bootleg, touchdown, nice drive. Mike Tirico's working this game. We had a lot going on in that drive. We had an injured finger. We had a backup quarterback throwing a strike. We had simultaneous possession of a fumble. We had a 37-yard run. A quarterback sneak for a touchdown. A missed extra point. And some pickle juice. A lot of bookkeeping to be done there. Eggman successful. His return, 35-54, 386. The numbers, 42-21 is your final. This sort of thing will make that plane ride home to Syracuse awfully long. Coos. Well, I finished last season with a 38-35 loss to Wake Forest. The Huskies opener and uh, first quarter. They're trailing 14 to zip. Michael Turner finds a seam, and he won't stop till he gets enough. Turner headed to the house. 93-yard kickoff return. All of a sudden, it's 14-7. Second quarter, same score. Wake's Fabian Davis. Grabs the punt and uh, his turn to do that stuff. Goes through the entire Husky defense. He also had 69 yards rushing. This is an 82 yard punt return. It's 21 7. Demon Deacons cruising, right? Fourth quarter, wake ahead, 35 32. Matt Wisnowski in to seal the deal. But the Huskies block the field goal. So the score remains 35 40 32. Northern Illinois still alive. Four seconds left in the fourth quarter. Wake Forest by three, Steve Azar had a 51-yarder, 45 is nothing but a thing. He ties the score at 35, we're headed to extra fun, overtime. Wake Forest trailing, 42-35, so they score the touchdown. They cut it to 42-41, kick the field goal, no, they want to go for two on the road, they want to win it, forget about it. Northern Illinois wins it 42-41, big upset for the Huskies in overtime the game. San Diego State, Fresno State, 16 to 7 in the fourth quarter. Adam Hall to J.R. Tolver. Tolver, 10 catches, 158 yards at 16-14. Final seconds of the game. Aztecs looking to give Tom Kraft his first win. Tommy Karofsky from 31 yards out. Schwack. Who is that that got up like that? Fresno State, the block, and then they seal the deal. Take another look at it. And the big problem here mm -hmm. starts in the beginning. The snap. Poor snap. Can't get it up. Can't get the ball up. The game's gone. But watch the hops here. Yeah, Great job. Hurt. Pat Hill digging the scene. Fresno escape. Colorado State. High pack, tension packed rivalry between these two. And Cecil Sapp had a huge oh. game in the opener against Virginia. Running over Buck. He should sell tickets for this ride to the Colorado defense. 
Second quarter, you know, it was a vaunted Colorado rushing attack that ran rough shot through the Rams last year and over everybody late in the season. Chris Brown put it on the ground. CSU in control, and a few plays later, here's Cecil. I mean, you know what? I thought the defense of Colorado State was fantastic. They put their offense in good position. Cecil Sapp was fantastic, fantastic, but that defense was tough. Craig Oates, meanwhile, a little bit of a tough first half there, Mark. Well, they've had a tough time throwing the ball when they can't rush the ball. Last year, if they ran the ball for over 300, they won. If they rush the ball for less than 80, they lost all three of those games. Oates gets sacked for a big loss there, and Barnett's team was in trouble in the second half. Deep in territory, Chris Brown never got the exchange, and Brown was plagued in the preseason by concussions, didn't get a lot of work. Don't know if that affected him, but he had a tough day. Fourth quarter, 13-0. There's Jeremy there Bloom. Is. The Olympic skier who wow. for, uh, foregoes hundreds of thousands of dollars in endorsements to chase his dream and play football for his beloved University of Colorado Buffaloes. Go and Jeremy! Jeremy Blue Got his has work. logged on and he is part of the Gone Network. Let him keep his endorsement money, my friend. <laughs> 75 yards to the house and the buffs are back in it. And Bobby purified. Then knifing and slamming his way deep into Ram territory at the one, and that would set up Chris Brown, who had a tough day, but Brown getting in there, and the Buffs are all the way back and on top at 14-13, but Bradley Van Pelt. Bradley Van Pelt. Look at the cut, and take that with you. If I was a coach, I would take Bradley Van Pelt as my quarterback any day of the week. I love his toughness. But Oaks trying to save the day for the Buff. Hits Derek McCoy down the middle, and Colorado is closing in. Buff still driving now. Oaks avoiding the rush. Desperately heaving. John Donahoe's got it. And the Buffs are getting close. 25 kicks to go. Oaks. Donahoe. No. No. And the Rams hang on to beat Colorado again. 19 to 14 the final. The Buffs have now lost four straight season openers. Barnett hasn't won one yet a season opener in Boulder year ago as the head coach of the Turks, coach of the year, took his team to the BCS game. Here's Ty getting ready, and the question was, can Carlisle Holiday throw it? Threw it quite well to Arnaz Battle. Third and 12 there, what a great call. I mean, you know, make, let him throw the short pass, let your receiver make the play. And here is the number one offensive weapon on the night for the Irish foot of Nick Seta. Knocks through a 51-yarder there. The Irish up 3-0. They had a defensive force, and Shane Walton, who was everywhere, Maryland quarterback, tried to throw. Now, this is an outstanding job with a beat on the ball, looking at it and looking at it, going up, getting your body position between the football and the receiver. Gets another one there. Nice pick, number two on the game. And might as well Lay down. go for the hat trick, and he ended up getting the hat trick. Three picks on the night. Back to the game here is Vontez Duff, and oh, you got to be sound in the kicking game. What do you mean they don't have any speed? Look at Vontez. He's got some good feet, too. He is gone. 76 yards to the house. Willingham, a winner in his debut. 22 to nothing the final. He's the first Notre Dame coach since Terry Brennan in 1954 to debut with a shutout. Brennan did it. 21 nothing. Talk the talk. You better walk the walk, young man. Chief Osceola throws down the spear, and then Greg Jones starts throwing down Cavalier defenders. 196 yards rushing in the first half of the Seminole. 16, nothing just like that. And then Chris Ricks goes to work looking for Anquan Boulder. Well, when you get, you know, when you have a guy like Jones who opens everything up with a great running game, it makes it easier on your quarterback. It's a completely different offense. Greg Jones makes this offense complete. Florida State up 30 to nothing. They turned the ball over several times inside the Virginia 30. They could have easily scored 60 yeah. in this game, 40 to 19 the final. They corrected their mistakes from last week. They didn't give up big plays defensively from the first bunch. Let's just point out, Billy McMullen, great game, 101 yards on five receptions, big time receiver at Virginia. And all following that up, Eric Krause, the 2001 Heisman winner, had that jersey retired. Not the number, though. Is 34 up there? Oh, no, it, it, it's up there. Jersey retired, Trevi. Yeah. But you get to keep you get to keep wearing the jersey. Somebody else does. Dewan Gross picking off the pass. He'd have a couple of picks on the night. But this is where Dewan made his part. They're going to retire the five jerseys <laughs> at the end of this. This looks to be what Nebraska is going to have to depend on. Play good, solid defense, and they are winning in the special teams. Offensively still struggling, but Dewan Gross was a huge impact player today. That was 83 yards, and how about this one, Mayday? 
Well, this one, watch. The ball's a little wobbly, but he still catches it straight ahead. Look at the blocking on this. He fouls his blocking straight ahead as a returner. Just take it straight ahead. Now, you're not going to catch me as a punter. Get out of here. Not with my speed. Goodbye. Duane Gross taking two punts back to the house. Troy State hung around with Nebraska. Made it a little bit tougher than, than perhaps the Cornhusker stunt. 31-16 the final. Lord threw the ball a little bit better than he did in the opener. Probably had a little more time to throw than he did in the opener. Joey Harrington gone, Jason Fife in for Oregon against Mississippi State and Harrington, or Harrington's successor, Fife, finding George Reister for the touchdown, 14-0 Ducks, and this is a Fife, he's got a few bullets in his gun. You know, I really liked his poise, you know, I mean, stepping in, and I know it's Mississippi State, it's not somebody who's going to, you know, be in the Pac-10, but I thought he did a lot of great things today. Here is Fife again against the Joe Lee Dunn defense. Now, they can confuse a new quarterback, and Fife dropping one on Sammy Parker, and the Ducks were rolling 36-7 at that point, 36-13 the final. The Dogs without their quarterback, Kevin Fant, who had an NCAA violation situation, and Kyle York. Rod Dantzler did for Clemson. Clemson taking on Georgia, and Fred Gibson. Don't call oh, he is ready, ready, ready. Fred doesn't like Freddy. 91 yards, dogs take a 14-7 lead. They lead 21-14 at the half. Clemson scored right before the half. Second half, dogs started coming unglued. A fumble on the pitch to Musa Smith and Bryant McNeil's going the other way. I thought Clemson's Did you ever run defense. That far? Uh, no, I can't run that far. I thought <laughs> Clemson's defense was fantastic. Played much better than last year. John Lovett, the new defensive coordinator, came over from Auburn. Here's DJ Shockley, who gave the dog offense a spark, finding Terrence Edwards, and we are locked up at 28. Clemson had one last effort. 31-28 after a dog field goal. Chad Jasmine smashing up there for 12 yards. Here's Willie Simmons, who's very poised for Tommy Bowden in this game. Kevin Youngblood, first down, Tigers. Here's Aaron Hunt. Home meets leather. Reaches for it's, a long it's one. It's good! No. Aaron Hunt, just short. Georgia hangs on 31 to 28. You know, between 77 and 87, two teams, 5-5-1 five, five and one against each other. Nine decided by a touchdown or less. It's four in the last 20 seconds. But Georgia won the game. Did they create a problem? Didn't finish, and here is a redshirt freshman, Brad Smith. He's just 18 years old, but playing very well for Mizzou. I mean, a poise in a quarterback, getting to the outside, making the right decisions on the option, and throwing the football today, too. But here, if you've got running backs that can make decisions like this and get in the end zone, it takes a lot of pressure off of a young quarterback. And that was T.J. Leon, 14-7 Mizzou, and now in the shotgun, here is Smith again in Missouri. Knocks off Illinois, 33-20 the final. In that game, Joe Paterno leading Penn State against UCF, Central Florida. The Knights had a 3-0 lead when Zach Mills, what? Zach Mills just gets oh, yeah. slobber knocked. <laughs> did, you, did you just make that up? I just tried to do that. <laughs> Larry Johnson really scored that. there. Take another look at this. You can appreciate okay. this. I, I love the hit, but I also like the toughness of Zach Mills. He brings more dimension to this offense, not just a drop-back passer, willing to take the shots for his team. Obviously, again, another option play, touchdown Penn State. Paul Jefferson scoring on that one. That one was the pitch. The other one was ruled a pass because Zach pitched it forward. And it's UCF a made it a tough game, but Penn State able to hang on 27 to 24 Mills with another fine day. On Legion Field, 7-0, tied up and moving. Tyler Watts, Sam Collins, nice touchdown. Stuff. It's going to be a blowout, right? Looked like it for a while. Two-point conversion made it 15-0. It was 22-0, but now Middle oh. Tennessee back to 22-14. Here's Ahmad Galloway hitting Axel. Speed burst gets him into the house and 33 yards out. Tied back up by 15, comfortable, or maybe not. Here comes Rashard Lee. Tennessee State's on the run. 29-27, Fran Torbush, not pleased. 32-27, Andrico Hines. Here's another linebacker, redshirt freshman, tied very high on. Freddie Roach, oh, had the dive there, the jump, hit the triangle, went PS2 on him and scored 39-34. Tyler Watts had a good day throwing the ball. Alabama led the SEC in rushing last year. Didn't run it quite as well. At Georgia Tech taking on Bobby Johnson of Vanderbilt. A.J. Suggs making his Georgia Tech debut, the Tennessee transfer. And look at A.J., Atlanta area native, throwing it to Will Glover for the touchdown. And Suggs again to Kerry Watkins in the jacket for roll. I like Georgia Tech at the start of the season. You know why? A.J. Suggs has something to prove. He feels like he got jobbed at Tennessee. Got Brian leading his team in what most assume would be a walk over UConn. Bonafide, 1A now, they came to play. Dan Orlovsky to Sean Feldison, 
Missed the extra point, 6 nothing. He's now a 9-3 game, Orlovsky to Brandon Young. Do it for Sue Bird. <laughs> Deion Anderson, touchdown, 16-3. It's now 16-10 when Brian St. Pierre has seen quite enough of this kind of action. Dumped it to Derek Knight. The Eagles on top, 17-16. St. Pierre again. Time looking for Grant Adams. St. Pierre showed some joking guys. Yeah, he really played well. UConn played so well, but it was just a breakdown in coverage. 24-16, the final. BC takes care of business. Look at this. North Carolina. With Aggies playing the South Carolina Gamecocks, but they ain't chicken. Corey Jenkins tossing the magic beans. James Atkins, 44-yard pitch, catch, kick good. 2010 South Carolina. 2017 now. Dacus Truman, two-yard touchdown, 34-24, Carolina. Hangs on 39-34. Seneca Wallace pitches to Lane Danielson. Cyclones are a, they're a tricky bunch. ISU beating up on Kansas, 10-0. They win by 42 later in the first. That's Hiawatha Rutland. Hiawatha had a touchdown. He had a touchdown against Florida State. That's a good team. Mm -hmm. East Carolina du Dukies, 23 straight losses, longest jag in 1A. Quarterback Chris Stapolito in, scores. Duke up 10 0. Duke's Brendan Dewan picks off the pass. He's going 28 yards for the TD. Duke up 20 to nothing. Oh, they, they're going to make people forget about Coach K's program. They win it 23 16. Nation's longest losing streak over. Goal post down. We should also mention Houston and Navy also won.